Good day and great health. My name is Dr. Jerrica Sarko of Ohio Specific Chiropractic. I'm a pediatric, family wellness, and upper cervical specific chiropractor. Today on this video, we're going to talk about the two major healthcare paradigms or models that are used. Those are salutogenesis and pathogenesis. Let's kind of break down pathogenesis first. The literal definition of the word pathogenesis means origin of suffering. Pathos means suffering or disease or sickness, and genesis means the origin of or the birth of. The perspective then of the pathogenic model will make the starting point disease. Disease will be the entity or the thing that needs to be addressed. The goal then within this model is to try and prevent and or treat said sickness or disease. This strategy though is going to be very passive and reactive in nature. That's based on this perspective that disease is the thing or the entity that needs to be addressed. You see, the relationship between disease and health is very similar to the relationship between cold and heat and darkness and light. Disease is the absence of health, similar to how darkness is the absence of light and cold is the absence of heat. In that sense, you're always going to be on the, on the reactive or the passive side of that equation. This will kind of feed directly into the motive or the motivation behind the pathogenic model, and that's one really based on fear. If you're always being passive or reactive, you really don't know when or where the disease will strike, and this will make fear a great motivator. Now, the criteria or the benchmarks often used within the pathogenic model are going to be ones based on quote-unquote normal values. These normal values aren't normal in the sense of being natural values, they're more normal, meaning average. Some of the more average quantifiable uh, values used within the pathogenic model are such things as heart rate and blood pressure. Now the role of the practitioner within this model is to be one really of a controller or a dominant figure within, uh, within that relationship between patient and uh, practitioner. The, uh, the role of the practitioner is gonna be, you know, mostly gonna be trying to control these average values or trying to control the disease or the sickness or the symptoms uh, within, that, within that person. The timetable or the, the use of the pathogenic model is often used very episodically or intermittently. It's only used ever so often when a disease presents itself. So now, how does that look in practice? Well, again, it's all about sort of the treatment of sickness or disease. It's also about trying to isolate pathologies and conditions. It's also about trying to regulate and or control symptoms, sicknesses, or diseases. And also a big part is about then trying to inhibit or suppress those symptoms of said sickness or disease. Now the, the major user of the pathogenic model is, uh, is medicine. Actually another name for medicine is allopathy. Pathy meaning again disease and allo meaning other. So it's the sort of the study of other diseases. Now let's look at the uh, sort of flip side of that coin and we'll look at salutogenesis. Now the literal definition of the word salutogenesis means origin of health. Saluto means health and again genesis means origin of. From this perspective, the starting point is health. Health will be the entity or the thing that needs to be addressed. The goal then of, this, of the salutogenic model is to help try to maximize the potential of, of the expression of health in that individual person. The strategy then is going to be one that's very active and proactive in nature. Again, uh, similar to that relationship between uh, health and disease and light and darkness and heat and cold, health needs to be something that needs to be constantly cultivated and grow in, in sort of growth. You have to be constantly growing health. Uh, I always like to think of a good, a good analogy is of, a, is of a fire. If you want to keep that fire warm and you want to keep it lit, what do you have to do? You have to constantly activate it and be proactive and, and add fuel and keep stoking that fire to keep it going. Same thing with our health. This will then create a motivation or a motive behind the salutogenic model that's going to be really one of being empowerment. You're trying to give strength and uh, trying to give strength and power to that individual person to make proactive and active decisions. The criteria or the benchmarks then of the salutogenic model 
are going to be more based on individual goals instead of average values. It's not that within the salutogenic model you ignore these average values of uh, blood pressure and heart rate and things like that. You more or less though look at the individual person first before you look at the, look at the values. You see the person within the values. The role of the practitioner again, the role of the practitioner within the salutogenic model it's going to be one of being a partner or a team member or, or a coach to help this person reach the individual goals and to be uh, active and proactive in their health, health choices. The timetable or the time use of the salutogenic model should be one really used of a lifetime. Again, you need to be, if you're going to be proactive and, and, and be active with your health, these are choices and decisions and actions that you need to make on a day-to-day -day basis. Now, how does that, how does this how does the salutogenic model look in practice? Well, we need to, the goal of, the, of a practitioner who uses the salutogenic model needs to focus on the expression of health or the things that help define health. Some of the major things that help def define health are adaptation, healing, homeostasis, regeneration, encouragement, support, and help to help optimize function. So anything that a practitioner can do within the salutogenic model is going to help the expression of these features of health, such as adaptation, healing, regeneration, homeostasis, and ultimately the goal is to help try to optimize function so then you can help express health at the greatest potential. The greatest uh, user or player that, or who uses the salutogenic model is chiropractic. Again, within chiropractic, our goal is not to really treat any specific condition or disease of the body, again, our major objective is to help improve the overall health and well-being of that individual person. So in that sense, chiropractic fits uh, completely within the salutogenic model. Now this is just sort of a quick primer into that relationship between the salutogenic model and the pathogenic model. But if you have any other questions or concerns uh, about this, about these models, uh, please don't uh, hesitate to reach out to me on my website at ohiospecific.com. Thank you very much.